of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council it is Monday, August 9th, 2010. Could we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Here. 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 Thank you. Please join me in the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. Councilors have anything to report on? Uh, yes, just yes. Um, on uh, last week, Thursday the 5th, I attended the uh, Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. And as a result of uh, questions at that meeting, uh, the town manager and myself will be attending a meeting of the Board of Trustees on September 16th, and at their request also to just kind of review the status of the phase two design and where that is with respect to the council's decision made on funding that, that type. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to um, let people throughout the community know that on September 25th, uh, from 8.30 to 11.30, there's going to be an open house at Eco Main. Um, and if uh, people have never been and toured uh, and seen the Eco Main facility, it is a uh, it is definitely worth going to. And there's going to be um, several events going on during this time, and one of them is going to be about backyard composting, and um, and there's going to be uh, a number of other events. So I would encourage people if they're looking for something to do on a Saturday morning at 8:30, Eco Main on the 25th of September. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay. Uh, next, we have the citizens' the first of our two opportunities for citizens to uh, comment or discuss items not on the agenda. Is there, if there's any citizen present who would like to do so, please come forward to the lectern. Seeing none, we'll move on. It's time for the town manager's report. Yeah, before I do my town, the town manager's report, I'd like to defer it to the clerk to uh, update on the okay. election process. Great. Thank you very much. Um, believe it or not, we are making pre preparations for the November 2nd municipal and general elections. Nomination papers are now available for town council, school board, and um, Portland Water District trustee. Uh, the deadline to submit nomination papers uh, for all three uh, council, school board, and water district trustees in my office Friday, September 3rd uh, at 4 p.m. We do have information available on the town's website regarding the uh, signatures required to be nominated for each of those offices. Also, uh, there's another article that announces that applications for absentee ballots for November 2nd are now also available. There are several ways that you can uh, request an absentee ballot, and that information is on the website as well. So I encourage anyone, if you have any questions regarding um, the nomination process for council, school board, or water district trustee, please don't hesitate to give me a call, and we'll share that information with you. Great. Thank you very much. Now the town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Ann. I, this was working fine before we had our little workshop, and I, you know, some, I think it powered down, and now it's lost its signal and whatever. I want to talk a few minutes about Fort Williams Park. Uh, and I've written a report, which I'll be posting on the website probably tomorrow, sent it today to the Council and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, basically trying to look at a broad view of Fort Williams, you know, where we stand after uh, the uh, citizen vote in a uh, couple months ago, and in really, you know, the, pers the staff's perception of what needs to be done with the park. Uh, and there's great photos that aren't on that screen. But if, if you think about the park, you go in now, there's a nice entrance paid for with Portland Headlight Funds. You then come to a brick building and a stone building, which have no windows. The windows and doors long disappeared. Uh, you then continue into the park, 
And you see, for example, around the pond, as you see on the front of this report, there used to be beautiful pathways leading to the pond. There was a stone wall right around the pond that was fixed, but there was another stone wall that wasn't. You go up the other side, you go to the bleachers, and you can walk to the top of the bleachers. If you look at that railing over there, you could have a kid walk on the top of the bleachers, and then there's a drop-off that's bigger from the top of that railing to the floor that's totally unsecured. That's on the tennis court side of the bleachers. You know, pr pretty dangerous area. It has been that way for forever. Uh, but nonetheless, it's there. Uh, you go to the, a lot of the walkways and pathways uh, are beginning to fall apart. Uh, and I'm not talking about the, the, the uh, pathway down by the ocean, uh, but you know, particularly up around the pond, uh, it, it's the tree roots have come up through there. It's, it's not the safest walking. That's what a lot of the, particularly the local residents do now, is walk in the park. You look at the long garages in the back. Uh, about half of them had new doors put a couple of years ago. The rest of them, you know, this piece is missing to the doors. The roof is virtually unsupported. If someone went out and walked on that roof, which they can do from the back, it uh, might be a bad scene. Uh, you look at the, the big cement building that's a beautiful picture here. Uh, that's just down below there, and uh, it's all boarded up. Uh, it's all boarded up. Uh, you can see actually in the memo here, you can see the garages. Uh, you look at, uh, there's a chip, you look at the fire station, paint on the side, windows boarded up, stuff falling off the tower. Uh, the Goddard Man Mansion speaks for itself. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's once per second, you know, some of us go into the park, we see the beautiful lawns and the view and the ocean. But there's other folks that come in the park and say, what's this? It's a bunch of buildings that are falling apart, uh, need a little repair. So anyway, we looked at it, and the park needs a couple of things. First, in the staff's belief, it needs an update of the master plan. Uh, the master plan of the park was last done in 2003. It primarily looked at maintenance. Uh, it, it needs to look at the types of things that the council is talking about uh, and that the public's talking about. You know, if you wanted to have concessions, you wanted to have some of these activities, where would, where's the best place for those to go, and how would they fit in, and what are the issues with setbacks, so that, so that you know, we're, we're not just pulling stuff out of air, that there's actually a plan that looks at that and, and proposes where those, where those might be. Uh, there's a number of revenue suggestions that are being kicked around. Uh, the staff suggestion, and there's, there's a list of uh, six of them in here, that says, you know, do those, get, get going on those six. Uh, do them right away. Look at the, the group use policy. Uh, that's now a, a dollar per, per person for uh, people intensive uses. Uh, instead of having, you know, while we're looking at the master plan and the longer issue of concession, experiment with push carts and some of those issues to see how to see how food uh, to see how food activities work out. Uh, actively promote more donations in the park. And if you notice, we put more donation. Uh, boxes up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a wedding area. There's, there's tons of folks who want to come in uh, for weddings. Uh, the rental units have them uh, more flexible in how they can be used. And also uh, to look at trying to speed up the, the process by which events are approved. Right, We lose events now because it just takes so long to approve them. It was lots of suggestions. The town, and I look at it, so we need to come up with some more money for, to fund some, need, some capital needs. The, the battery Blair, the other big projects that, uh, that have been identified as needing to be done. Plus, we also have the day-to-day -day maintenance. And looking at the park, and this, this memo lays it out, if you look at maintenance, which is such things as just fixing these doors and windows, fixing roofs, fixing uh, <clears throat> some of the walkways, fixing the stone walls, uh, work on the athletic fields, uh, stone wall construction, play, keeping the playgrounds up, keeping the current pick and shelter up, over the next five years, that's $475,000 worth of work to be done, uh, really above with what we're doing, uh, $400,000 more than we're doing now. We're only doing about $15,000 annually for maintenance projects. What's that convert to the tax rate? That's $80,000 a year or five cents, uh, or five cents uh, per thousand. You know, there are a lot of different messages that people can say were ha happened in the recent citizen vote, but you know, one of them, I think, is, is that there aren't going to be any fees, or any, you know, maybe there'll be the buses or whatever, but for the most part, there's, been, there's not going to be a whole lot of fees, and the town needs to look at how it's going to maintain the park, 
and ought to do a better job maintaining it. So 80,000 is a lot of money to, to do every year, uh, but at the same time, if we want to keep the park up, we want to keep it safe, uh, we want to have a better look at that's what it takes. Uh, capital priorities, uh, if we instituted just those simple fees that I just identified, uh, those, those different uh, funding mechanisms, you know, we're, we're estimating that along with the current fees and the new fees, we'd take in about $600,000 per year. Uh, that's an added $375,000 over the next five years. Uh, 600000 yeah, 600, over the next five years. And that would fund the update of the master plan, the new wedding picnic space, <laughs> Uh, perimeter fencing and gates, some of the Fort Wayne's Advisory Commission has recommended. A visitor center design, something else came from the Commission. Uh, dealing with some invasive plan issues, some miscellaneous odds and ends. And then there's the two big issues of the Goddard Mansion and the, uh, the bleachers. And it's, it's staff's belief, and I know the issues keep coming up, that uh, unless there's a use that's compatible with both the adjacent neighborhood and with the predominant park nature of the park, that the substantial part of those structures ought to be removed. Uh, and, and that's in keeping with, with the Fulton's Advisory Commission recommendations over the last few years. But it, it's to, to get real and to use the master plan process to decide you know, what is it as part of these buildings that you want to keep and what is it as, uh, what is it that, what, how would you repurpose those areas? maybe using a little bit more, using a little bit of what would be left. I, I know those will be controversial proposals, uh, but nonetheless, you know, there's not, you know, I think it's pretty clear. The Fort Young's Charitable Foundation, you know, is trying to raise money. They're focusing on Battery Blair. They're focusing on uh, the Arboretum uh, proposal. Uh, it's difficult, I think, to figure it out over the years to raise money for things like the Goddard Mansion. You know, if that had been easy, it would have been done in the, the 25 years that, that the building's been in the condition it's been, similarly with the bleachers. So, you know, I just think we need to come to, to grips with the reality of uh, what monies are going to be available, potentially what's going to be available, look for maintenance to tax sources, look for capital improvements for donated uh, areas and for fees generated in the park, and, and basically to move us forward uh, towards the 50-year uh, anniversary of the town's acquisition of the property, which will be on December 1st, 2014. Uh, I've laid this all out. I sent this to the Fulton's Advisory Commission today. As I said, I'm going to post it on the internet in the morning. Uh, but it, it's, you, you have a workshop, I think it's October 4th, uh, with the Fulton's Advisory Commission. They're going to be meeting on August 18th, I believe. And what I wanted to do was to get these, these ideas out early. Uh, so that they can begin to be uh, uh, reviewed, discussed, and you know, hopefully give some specific direction uh, of a possibility of a, I call it a five-year implementable uh, plan of action that's essentially based on what the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has already identified for capital needs, as well as a fresh look at, at maintenance needs. Uh, so anyway, there's beautiful pictures that show some of these things and, and the needs and uh, look forward to the discussion in the, uh, the months ahead. Thank you, Mike. Are there questions for Mike? Sarah? Can you explain the Arboretum? I I've never quite understood what the proposal is and where it's going to be and where the money yeah. comes from. The Arboretum is about, I think, 20 different pods around the park where there'd be plantings. Or there'd be, some of them would be removal of the invasive species that are beginning to block the views of the ocean and where are taking over the, the natural uh, wildlife. You know, the, the one that's mentioned most often is right at the beginning of the cliff walk, uh, you know, just as you're going up the hill uh, towards the parade ground over there on the left. Uh, but there's other areas right inside the entrance. There's areas down near Portland Headlight. There's areas over by the pond uh, that, that should have plantings of different areas. There's, there's thought of uh, having a children's garden somewhere. The overall plan for the, uh, for the Arboretum is 3.5 million dollars and you know again while other arboretums have raised that uh, you know one suggestion again in this report is that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation meet and really come to grips on what can you really raise for money and what is it that you really want to raise money for you know one of the things I look at the God Mansion keeps coming up over and over and yet no one comes forward with any money no one comes forward you know let's in my view 
let's admit it that the, the, the money's not coming there, and that you know maybe some of these other things that are talked about, you know, they're just not doable unless you want to really change the predominant park nature of the park or have a use that would really be detrimental to the neighbors. And I know some of the neighbors themselves really want the, the thing saved. Although I, I think if we you know looked at restaurants and other things with you know we we just look you know trying to keep Rudy's open for a few hours uh, weekend nights you look at that and you, you look at again you know so close those homes are right on top of that I think when you realistically looked at something that would go to 11 at night and, you know seven nights a week or whatever you begin to deal with some some tough issues so uh, did I answer the question kind of roamed around other questions for Mike. Yeah, the, the finishing the manager's report, I just uh, also wanted to acknowledge all of the efforts of everyone that was involved in the road race uh, over the weekend. Uh, there were over 700 runners from Cape Elizabeth that finished. I uh, hazard to guess there were several hundred Cape Elizabeth volunteers as well, at least, between people hosting and, uh, you know, water stops and recycling in so many different ways. And, uh, again, it, it's a tremendous activity uh, for the town and uh, really seems to bring a lot of community pride and really appreciate the efforts uh, of all, particularly of all the public safety people in Cape Elizabeth, as well as the other towns that uh, help us out as well uh, in that endeavor. Between those folks and the volunteers within Cape Elizabeth and from the surrounding area, it's really quite an event. Frank. Question, Mike. Has there ever been a discussion with the, um, the race people about um, ultimately the maximum size that we can accommodate? that race? We discussed it every year uh, and we've allowed it to increase by you know several thousand. At one point it was a 3,000 cap. Yeah. This year the cap was 7,000. They had 5,700 finishes. Uh, I would guess there were probably another couple hundred what they call bandits folks that were in the race that, that weren't registered. Uh, I was watching the race myself. That was the thing I was looking for. Uh, but it uh, this year, things seem to go exceedingly well. The, the problems we've had in the past, are particularly with cars getting to the start, and the chief said, you know, if he had 25 minutes before the race, it looked hectic, it looked difficult. 15 minutes before the race, there was no traffic at all. No. Everyone right? was in the parking spots. That's, that's a tough spot, and the finish is, the finish is a tough spot. Uh, but it, it's really, it's close to, it's, it's very close to its limit. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe rather than waiting until then, <clears throat> Coming to us with a proposal for a bigger race, we should think about what the limit should be in advance and so that's we, what it is, because it did seem yeah. very hectic to me. We have all we have those discussions every year. And we we go back and forth and we've allowed it to creep up a little bit, but never too much in, in any one year. And I do have a meeting with the not scheduled, but I'm gonna be meeting with the Beach and Beacon folks uh, to discuss with them the group use uh, policy of the park and how it applies to them. And uh, you know that the part of uh, that there would, will be a contribution, as there is with all the other groups, uh, the, under the group use policy for them to contribute to uh, for the use of the park like anyone else. Mike, could, for those people who might be watching who might not understand, because I know there is some confusion in the community about who exactly runs the race, who controls the race, whatever, could you just clarify who runs the race, that what the town's role is in the race? I'd be happy to. Uh, the Beach to Beacon is a 501c3 uh, that uh, is chaired by David Weatherby, he's the president of it, a resident of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, there's about 10, 12 board members. Uh, I've served as a board member from the inception, but they had to look after the town's interests, uh, not to look after the race's interests. Uh, David Backer, a past member of the council, has been a long time board member. Uh, Joni Benoit Samuelson is a board member. Uh, Russ Connors, who oversees the wheelchair. They are, and there's a number of other folks uh, affiliated as well with uh, TD Bank. Uh, they're an independent 501c3, no affiliation uh, with the town. They're, they're closely aligned with TD Bank. Uh, they purchase services from TD Bank. Uh, TD Bank donates a lot of services uh, to the race. Uh, the race hires DMSE uh, Sports Enterprises. Uh, uh, David McGilvery and his crew to do the professional race management. Uh, the race brings in, obviously, you know, quite a bit of money in uh, race registration fees. Uh, they also have sponsors, uh, everyone from Nike to obviously TD Bank. Uh, the name sponsor, the kids race is sponsored by another group. 
uh, they foot the expense of the road race. If anyone wishes to see their financial records, their 990s are posted on, online uh, at Foundation Finder. Uh, if you type Foundation 990, you can, you can look at them free online. I don't think the 2009 reports there yet, but the 2008. It takes it's several hundred thousand dollars a year uh, that the race takes in. They foot all of the expenses for the town. They reimburse us for all of the police coverage, all of the out-of-town police coverage, uh, all of the other uh, out-of-pocket expenses the town has. Uh, there's times with a few staff members, Bob Malley, uh, Neil Williams, that we, we don't charge them their time, nor do we charge anyone else their time for any activity uh, within the town, but we do charge for all the police, fire, rescue, and all of that. It's a huge effort. I think there were probably 12 rescue units uh, that were involved in this, including you know the private Northeast Ambulance, as well as Cape Elizabeth's own rescue, as well as uh, help from other communities. Great, thank you. I just I've had questions from people, as I'm sure we all have, who just aren't quite sure what the financial relationship is and and any kind of business relationship between the town and the separate Beach to Beacon entity. So I think that clarifies it. Um, I just one further comment. Since you weren't able to get your photos up yeah. uh, during your presentation, if you can get them up online later yeah, sometime, I'll, I'll that would be helpful. Yeah, the, yeah, it's going to be a PDF file because it's, it, it was 40 megabytes, the regular file, so the pictures are really intensive. No, I just, I think yeah. that um, anybody who is watching and listening to your report might be interested in the pictures that you were referring to that, for technical reasons, weren't yeah. able to be seen tonight. So, thank you. We all set? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, that's the town manager's report. Uh, next on our agenda is a review of the minutes of the meeting held July 12th. Do I hear a motion? So moved. There's Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any corrections or changes? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item number 98, <laughs> entitled Rooster Review Process. <laughs> um, this rooster topic was referred to the Ordinance Committee last month, but it now appears that the issue may be addressed within the zoning ordinance, so it is recommended that the issue also be referred to the planning board. Do I hear a motion? I move that it be referred to the planning board. Is there a second? second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Penny. Uh, one of the con conversations I had with uh, Councillor Sherman was about the um, Cape Farm Alliance developing a kind of a draft or a recommendation relative to that ordinance and he had agreed that we should move forward with that. How does that fit in with this moving to the uh, planning board? Mike? Yeah, um, that's just fine. It's, you might want to submit it to the planning board. Okay. The, the, there's already a reference to roosters for exactly. commercial purposes right. in the zoning ordinance. Right. What we were looking at here was maybe putting forward a proposal that you'd need a lot of at least 100,000 square feet yeah. to have roosters on your property yeah. in order to make sure the farms weren't affected at all. But then when there was already the reference to commercial roosters in, in the regular zoning ordinance, it seemed as though it has to be in the zoning ordinance. And under the, the town's rules, any amendment in the zoning ordinance has to be reviewed by the the planning board. Okay, so going, yeah. therefore I'll suggest no, that... If, if there's any suggestions, send them, you yeah. know, once the council takes this action, uh, send, them, send them to the planning board. That'd be great. So I'll suggest to the Cape Farm Alliance that they send a recommendation to the planning yeah. board tomorrow. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. So it's now going to go to the planning board before the ordinance committee, correct? And then the ordinance committee will have to wait for the recommendation. Uh, it, it, it come back to the council and then be Referred back. Yes, it's, it's already been sent to the Ordinance Committee, but I presume they will defer their work on it until they hear from the Planning Board. It totally doesn't work. I can't get it on the <laughs> You're having problems over there, Mike. Okay, um, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item number 99, 
which has to do with the tree ordinance. Um, the recommendation is to schedule a public hearing on this for September 13th. The amendments were accepted from the Ordinance Committee last month, uh, but we do need to set a public hearing before final adoption. So do I hear a motion? Sarah. I move we set a public hearing on the tree ordinance for September 13th, 2010, 7.30 in the town hall. It's been Second. moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Okay, next we move on to item number 100, which is some proposed amendments to the town council rules. These uh, proposed amendments are detailed in your package, but they would implement changes consistent with the communication strategy that we adopted last month. Mike, do you want to say anything specific about which portions they deal with? It's, it's mostly about public input during workshop meetings. Yes. Uh, the current town council rules provide uh, that there's no opportunity for public comment uh, during workshop meetings. Uh, this would provide that there would be an opportunity uh, at workshop meetings and at town council meetings uh, that as soon as an item is introduced and prior to, prior to town council discussion on any item, members of the public may speak on each agenda item for not more than three minutes each up to a total of 15 minutes. If there's more speakers of time available, the chairman may allocate the speaking time in order to balance the debate, make sure all viewpoints are heard. Uh, the public participation uh, shall conclude when the town council begins its discussion. That in no way limits the public hearing time uh, to the 15 minutes. That still uh, remains uh, unlimited. And this refers to items that are on the agenda. So for regular meetings where we have the discussion of items not on the agenda before, at the beginning and at the end of the meeting, that all remains the same. That's correct. Okay. Everybody's clear on what the... Uh, proposal is chairman I yes. had a question on actually section two <clears throat> yes um, near the end it, uh, a sentence an email notice shall not serve as the sole notice this is a section two special meetings an email notice shall not serve as a sole notice unless prior to the meeting the recipient acknowledges receipt of the email I was wondering how does that acknowledgement take place? Did it just contact the town clerk to say, yes, I did get it? I'm just wondering how that, how yeah. that happens. Th that rule's been in there for a while. Yeah. And it, it's, I think it was, came in, you know, council discussion once. And folks wanted to be sure that there wasn't an email sent out, you know, 60 hours before a meeting saying there's a, there's a meeting, be there. Right. They, they, they wanted to make sure there was a proactive attempt to actually reach everyone. Right. So, so acknowledging receipt. To whom? By, to, to the uh, to, uh, town clerk. Yeah, to, town to clerk. the clerk. But usually, you know, 99% of your meetings don't get scheduled that way. And okay. uh, they're scheduled, you know, well in advance. So. Just kind of curious. Yeah. Okay. But that is Thank that you. if a special meeting had to be called for any reason, we'd make sure you, we don't just rely on email. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Uh, I, in terms of the, the uh, description of how that citizen input will take place. Is that going to be a standard going forward on all agendas? It's always going to be out there regardless. Oh, you mean the standard text? The text that's now currently attached to what we have today. Um, is that going to be the standard going forward? I believe so, Mike, right? At the, on our agenda yep. uh, page for this meeting tonight, and it was also on the workshop agenda earlier yeah, the this evening. It's, you know, about half a page worth of stuff uh, verbiage that explains it and I know Mike tried to get it as concise as possible but you don't want to have it so concise that nobody understands what it is it talks about public participation it, it also talks about speaking at the meeting on topics not on the agenda and it talks about decorum so I think the intent is that this be placed this verbiage be placed on every workshop and regular meeting agenda just so that if you know and it'll be on the website too so that if anybody picks up an agenda, they'll know what the rules are. Great. I think it's, I think it's, very, it's an important practice to have it all the time, not yes. just once a year or twice a year on a website, but every single agenda. Because it, you know, somebody's sitting here for the first time on an issue of importance to mm -hmm. them, they wouldn't necessarily know. Right. So, I good. agree. Any other questions? 
Do I hear a motion? Sarah. Uh, I move we implement the changes to the town council rules consistent with the communication strategy adopted, adopted last month. Is there a second? Oh, a second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number 101 has to do with paper throw. Uh, at our workshop immediately previous uh, to this meeting, um, we discussed paper throw, and the recommendation is to set a public hearing for Monday, September 13th, on the potential of a paper throw system for solid waste. Um, I think the, to synopsize the conclusion of the workshop, it is that there's a um, description of the paper throw concept, and there will be some information from the EPA about parameters of savings, potential savings that might occur, and so on and so forth. Basically, that's just to give people an idea, citizens an idea of what we want to hear from you about. But we are, we the council want to hear any and all thoughts on this. It's going to be pretty wide open uh, input session. So come on down and say what you think. So if any other, Mike, would you like to add anything or any other counselors? No? Okay. Uh, it'll be on the website. Um, you know what that description is. So, uh, do I hear a motion? For the I'll make the motion. I move that we uh, set a public hearing um, to hear from the public regarding paper throw on Monday, September 13th, 2010. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next on our agenda is item number 102, which, uh, oh, and I also wanted to thank, um, back on paper throw, I wanted to thank Penny Jordan, who's been working on this issue because she's our liaison with Eco Maine. I wanted to thank Frank Governale because he's done some, um, some analysis on this that's proved helpful to the council. And I also wanted to thank the Recycling Committee and Bob Malley for their work on this issue. They've been um, very involved in this, and so I, I didn't want to, I, do not want to neglect to thank them for their work on it. Item 102, the Appointments Committee report. Penny, you're the chair? Yes. Um, I'd like to put forth um, recommendations to fill uh, vacancies on uh, community services, recycling, and Thomas Memorial Library. Do you want me to take them one at a time, there's one, two, three, four, five in total. Do you want them? To Does the council feel a need to take them separately? I think we can do all five. So I'll together. list. I'll read so it all. Just read their names yep. and terms and um, words. The uh, appointments committee is uh, recommending for the community services services advisory commission. Uh, Michael J. Connor. Uh, for a term uh, to expire 12-31-2010. We are recommending Nikki Dresser uh, for the term which will expire 12-31-2011. For Recycling Committee, we are recommending Jamie Garvin and uh, for the term to expire 12-31-2012. And for the Thomas Memorial Library Trustees, we're recommending uh, Ken Piper for a uh, term to expire 12-31-2010, and Kate Mitchell for the term to expire 12-31-2011. And I want to say that um, all applicants, as always, were uh, just phenomenal, and um, I thank um, everybody for being willing to take the time to become part of the committees in Cape Elizabeth. Is there a second to that motion? I'll take that as a motion. So, yep. second? Yep, a second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Appointments Committee. Okay. Um, item number 103 has to do with 
poll location on Dermot Drive. CMP has requested approval for poll. Mike, do you want to say anything about it? This is at the corner of South Street and Dermot Drive. The department heads have looked at it, and there are no concerns. Okay, do I hear a motion? I move that we accept the um, Central Manpower's request for poll location on Dermot Drive. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. And seconded. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item number 104, which has to do uh, with the annual election of MMA Vice President and Executive Committee members. Um, we have a ballot in front of us. I would like to make a motion as the LPC, um, the Legislative Policy Committee uh, member for MMA for, from Cape Elizabeth. I would like to uh, propose that we vote for uh, Michelle Beal, who is the City Manager of City of Ellsworth, Marston Lovell, Councillor City of Saco, Robert Yandow, Town Manager, Town of York, for three-year terms as directors. And then there is a, those are all uncontested. Then there is a contested race for VP for a one-year term. Um, and I would uh, like to propose that we vote for um, the nominee by petition, Clint DeShan, Town Manager, Town of Herman. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And then we have item number 105, which is a request for a hardship abatement. Um, a property owner has asked for an abatement of property taxes by reason of infirmity or poverty. Pursuant to 36 MRSA 8, Section 841.2.G, applications are confidential, and hearings and reviews on these requests are held in executive session. The decision will be made in public, but we will be off, go off camera. We will go into executive session, and then we'll come back and be in open session to make our decision. But we will not disclose the identity of the applicant. Since we are proposing to go into executive session, I'd like to um, see if there's any citizen here who would like to take advantage of the second opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Please come forward if you'd like to. No one's coming forward, so we'll say no one's there. Oh, and, uh, sorry. Chair, Chair uh, yes. Swift-Cat, I have a question. Um, may I uh, add a council report that I forgot to in the opening of the meeting, number one. Number two, may I ask a question of the town manager at this time about the Beach to Beacon race? Sure. Would that be all right? You're Before a we go into executive citizen. position. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that the Open Space Management Committee will be meeting tomorrow evening, immediately following the Conserva Conservation Commission meeting, which, is, which begins at 7 o'clock. And open to the public, as always, and we are beginning our very... Uh, substantial outline creation for the management plan. So the public is certainly welcome. And the other question I, I was thinking about um, Beach to Beacon when uh, the manager was giving his uh, report of that, and that is, has there, um, has there been any discussion? Um, and if, if not, uh, is there any possibility of initi initiating discussion of, of a fee for Beach to Beacon runners? to the town specific, specifically for the benefit of Fort Williams. Mike, yeah. uh, I alluded to it a little bit earlier. The group use policy provides uh, a dollar per person for vehicle, in, for, for people intensive use of Fort Williams Park. Uh, that policy has never been applied to the Beach to Beacon Road Race. I've informed David Weatherby that is a desire to do so, and I've also recommended that that fee be looked at uh, for being increased in terms of that not only for Beach to Beacon but for everyone. Uh, plus, we're also looking at charges uh, for all groups of when they utilize large field spaces uh, so much per day. Uh, for the use of those fields. I'm, I'm uh, planning to have a meeting later this month sometime 
uh, with uh, David Weatherby, and uh, we've invited uh, another member of the Beach to Beacon Board as well. I don't know if that person's coming, but uh, uh, we are having those discussions. Will there be any opportunity for Council to participate in the amount? The Council will have to approve the amount okay. in the end. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard opinions from different councillors <laughs> on the topic, and whatever I come up with, I don't think everyone's going to be happy with. But uh, <laughs> I don't know who, who, you know, which single councillor I would invite to the meeting. So, okay. uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I think the council has faith in your ability to handle yourself in the meeting, but it, it will be open to um, review by all councillors, as as you said, all the councillors yeah. are going to have to have a chance to weigh in, discuss it, and vote on it. And so. by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. And by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Yes. Sarah. Can I just have, make one more suggestion? I've always thought that would be the perfect time to have a big party in the fort and make it a fundraiser. Is that, can that be part of the discussion? I mean, you have so many runners and so many family and fans yeah. and all the people standing by the road. It seems, it just kind of ends. Like, it seemed, would be fun to get everyone gathered in the park and sell them an expensive lunch. Can it's, that be part of it? I, I, Michael, I think, I think the, the, the executive um, overview that was presented tonight, sort of, if you, if you read that, the sort of the flavor of it, the, the gist of it is to do the very thing you're talking about. And I think it's just to set the agenda and to really get all hands on deck and all the input early in the, in the stage of developing a five-year strategy that, I mean, you're right on. I mean. Those of us who went to that, the work's already been done. Yeah. Not just tip it, yeah. but finish it off. I mean, some of us here were invited guests to the Beach of Beacon, to the to the, uh, the lobster bay, and it was held on a, a family property. And you know, you wonder how come that isn't being done at Fort Williams as a possibility. You know, I mean, it's this there's those kinds of things that are real opportunities and options. Yeah. But early on, that was looked at to have it at Fort Williams yeah. Park, but we do not allow the consumption. Right of alcoholic beverages and I understand I understand that runners after a long day of running uh, that's <laughs> a tradition you don't know that firsthand Michael? I don't <laughs> no, okay. I'm not a runner can't you tell <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on moving on um, before we turn off the cameras I would like to uh, just note some upcoming meetings um, and then before we uh, move to go into executive session our upcoming meetings, we'll have a town council workshop regarding land use September 7th, a regular town council meeting September 13th. We'll have a finance committee meeting with regard to the audit presentation on October 4th, and also that night we will have a workshop regarding Fort Williams Park. And then we have upcoming regular council meetings on October 13th. We have a November 1st workshop coming up and so on and so forth. I won't go into the topics for the rest of these, but that gives people a flavor for what's coming up. So I will now entertain a motion to go into executive session. I so move. <coughs> seconded. Then moved and seconded and I would note that it is pursuant to 36 MRSA section 841.2.G because we're re required to say that by law, by state law. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.